Good afternoon, I'm George Latimer, Westchester County Executive. It's uh, the two o'clock hour on Friday, May 8th, and uh, we're in our uh, media room to give you an update on the status of the coronavirus outbreak here in Westchester County. Uh, we were here just in this location a couple of hours ago with uh, some of our key medical professionals to talk about um, a, uh, the primary Westchester County Executive and the status of the coronavirus outbreak here in Westchester County. Uh, we were here just in this location a couple of hours ago. Technical issue, and uh, we'll see if it's resolved. I'm ready to go. Okay. My apologies. A little technical issue, um, which we're going to address as part of our general review today. And we're going to co cover a couple of basic topics, and uh, and then if there are any questions that members of the press have, you can communicate by email to uh, Catherine Chaffee, our director of communications. <clears throat> she and Emily Lavin, also in our communications department, are setting this up, uh, and we'll answer those questions uh, after we have our general presentation. Uh, the statistics that we've received at this point in time show a continuation of the trend that we've been talking about now for the better part of a month, and that is the continuing slow, steady downturn of incidents of uh, active cases of coronavirus here in Westchester County. The number of positive cases rose by 200 last night to today's number of 30,905 individuals who have tested positive for coronavirus. <coughs> Excuse me. However, when you subtract out the people who have had uh, a test, a positive test two weeks or more ago, it brings our active case number down to 4,272. And that is another continual day. We've gone about uh, three weeks now, continually dropping the number of active cases from the prior day. And just to give you a parameter, a month ago today on April 8th, we had 11,196 active cases. That means people that have tested positive that had not reached the two-week cutoff. So at this point, the number of people who have tested positive that have not reached the two-week uh, cutoff is 4,272, and clearly that is a significant drop down from the 11,000 number. There are still new positive cases that uh, come every day from our testing, but I think we're, we're pleased with the progress of our testing. We've tested at this point 107,466 tests here in Westchester County. We believe they roughly equate to one person per test. There may be a couple of examples of a duplicate test, <clears throat> but we think it's fair to say that 107,000 plus tests represents 10.7% of our population. That is a much higher percentage than New York City or our friends on the island or elsewhere in New York State as a percentage of the total population. And of course, you've heard it said, and I agree, that the more we test, the better we know the extent of the contagion. So to the fact that we have 30,000 positives, but they're based on having over 107,000 tests is good news. And as the testing numbers come out, we're now running about 70% negative in the testing and 30% positive. That is a good sign as well. So 4,272 4, active cases is our current number. We have a total of 1,191 deaths from the COVID-19 virus. The notable element of that number is that number for today is only four individuals more than it was last night. Or the night before last. Uh, four deaths, one death, any number of deaths are tragedies, but it's important to note that that is the smallest number of deaths we've had overnight since the very beginning of this contagion. When we first started to lose some individuals, uh, we had uh, single digit numbers, but to be at four deaths overnight, one night, is a sign of the continuing drop of, uh, of fatalities. That is, that is good news in the sense of the volume of those, uh, those that are passing away. <clears throat> but as uh, I mentioned, uh, you saw on Wednesday, we mentioned yesterday, we've created a, uh, a remembrance for those individuals who have died, ribbons of remembrance at Noir Preserve in Yonkers. We invite you to go there uh, today, tomorrow, any day of the week. It's open during daylight hours, and uh, you can uh, make a statement on behalf of any of these people that have died. I, I think, frankly, it's a tragedy that those of us in government talk about the governmental elements of this both how we're fighting the contagion, how we're trying to reopen the economy, and never talk about the human tragedy and loss of life. Uh, this loss of life is the reason for all of this. If, uh, if this were a disease that didn't take human life, made people ill or uh, injured, but not fatally so, uh, our response would have been completely different. But we're dealing with the loss of neighbors and friends. So 1,191 deaths, uh, only four more than the night before. Uh, we hope for the day where we can report that there were no deaths overnight. One of those deaths, however, is very important. And uh, according to the, uh, the, the quick research that we've done so far, there are 11 cases of 
pediatric multi-system inflammatory syndrome in Westchester County in hospitals. And when they're usually uh, identified in a local hospital, they're transferred to the Westchester Medical Center, which is a tertiary care facility in the county and better able to handle this type of specific case. And particularly the Maria Ferrari Children's Hospital, which specializes in pediatric medicine. Our uh, Commissioner of Public Health, Dr. Sholita Amla, who's here with me for the 11 o'clock uh, press conference, is by profession a pediatrician. And uh, some of the other people in our team, Dr. Dial Hewitt, Jr., who is uh, head of our communicable diseases uh, component within the Department of Health, and Dr. Michael Gowitz, who's with us today, who heads up that operation over Maria Ferrari. They all talked about what the symptoms were of this. Uh, for those of us who are not medical professionals, this particular syndrome is not just uh, unique to, to Westchester County. We saw some stories about it in New York City and on Long Island earlier this week, and as we've tracked it back, uh, it evidenced itself in the United Kingdom and England uh, a few weeks ago, a week or two ago, and I read an article just a few minutes ago in the Los Angeles Times that talked about it showing up at the LA Children's Hospital. So there is some potential link to COVID-19 these children that are, are, are suffering from this disease uh, were in families where the parents tested COVID positive at some point in time. The two week uh, incubation period came and went. And while the parents weren't affected, apparently the children are. So we're gonna let medical science try to sort through the mystery that this is. But we do wanna report that we have had one fatality from that. And that we pray that the other cases uh, will all recover and uh, go forward with their very young lives. That, that probably is the greatest of all tragedies, is that very young, very young children with their whole lives ahead of them are seriously ill, and, and for those that lose their life, they lose the whole potential of, of what life had to offer them. But uh, to summarize again our circumstances on statistics, we are continuing the, the slow but steady decline in the uh, impact of uh, COVID-19 here in Westchester County. Uh, about a month ago, on or about this time in April, we were at its peak. We were worried about flattening the peak during that period of time. Now we've certainly flattened the, the curve and we're on the way down. It's a slow descent. And with each day, uh, there is a fatality factor. Reporting on a couple of other things that we hope were important. We began this past Monday antibody testing at the Westchester County Center, which has now become a medical facility, a temporary medical facility. The Westchester Medical Center has taken on the responsibility of providing antibody testing, uh, which is taking blood and then processing it in the labs. Uh, on behalf of uh, individuals and we've targeted our first responders, Westchester County, and also our municipal companies. And that would be county police, correction officers, probation officers, also those in our emergency services department, our Department of Health staff at the county level, and then in the municipal governments, police, fire, EMS individuals as well. Uh, so far, uh, when the day ends, we expect to top 1,500 tests this week, which is a significant number of antibody testing. Uh, the tests uh, are reliable. The particular test that's being used now has been approved by the federal government. That's 99% uh, accuracy. Not every test in the market can make that claim. Uh, and you should be careful uh, if you're going to take an antibody test to make sure that it's being given out by a reputable organization. Northern Westchester Hospital is expected to open antibody testing for uh, municipal first responders this coming Monday. Locations in Mount Kisco and in Chappaqua and in that area of the county, uh, those local officials and individuals can contact Northern Westchester Hospital for that information. Uh, we will continue uh, to work on a testing model here in our uh, partnership with Westchester Medical Center. At the county center, we'll branch out beyond first responders once we've satisfied that constituency. And we'll let you know how we're going to broaden out that, uh, that amount of testing as well. But we're hopeful that the antibody testing and the general testing that we're doing are very important in the way all of this fits together. <clears throat> Most people have asked the question continually, when are we going to reopen the society? We've been uh, in some various stages of lockdown now for almost two months. And, and it is a, uh, you know, it's a dispiriting time. The, the ability for people to live lives the way they're accustomed to living it has been curtailed. It's had a tr tremendous economic impact. We're looking at nationwide uh, unemployment like we haven't seen the likes of since the Great Depression. Uh, we have uh, individuals who don't know how they're going to uh, find food for their family. We have small businesses that, after being in business for any number of years, are going to go under and not be able to reopen. And uh, we have governments, ours being one of them, that are so affected by the downturn in revenue that we're not sure how we'll balance the budget between now and the end of the year. 
Uh, that is a topic worthy of discussion as we go forward. We had some meetings this week. We've addressed uh, $20 million of that already. We're going to address additional amounts and we'll certainly you know, release that information as we've made some decisions and in concert with the Board of Legislators. So the executive branch and the legislative branch are dialoguing on these different uh, options and choices. I would point out that Governor Cuomo has uh, articulated in his morning press conferences a guideline for how areas of the state should be open, both individual counties tied into their regions. And he's listed a series of uh, categories that have to be met. Uh, and some of them for Westchester County will be easy to meet. Some of them will be more difficult to meet. It's our task to try to meet those guidelines for only when we meet those guidelines will we be able to then return to the governor, having met those guidelines, and have him then use his executive authority to open up in phases the, uh, the government uh, and uh, the business community of Westchester County and elsewhere. Uh, just to give you a couple of examples, uh, one of the standards that's been set by the governor is that we must test a metric of uh, our residents every month. And by Westchester standards, we have met that met uh, metric so far. It calculates out to 30,000 tests a month here in Westchester County, and as of April 30th, which was the first two months of the contagion, we had tested 92,000 people, almost 93,000 people. That's well above what would be a two-month goal of 60,000. And so far, the month of May, where our goal would be 30,000 by the end of the month, we are here on the eighth day of the month. We've already tested 15,000 people, which we have for the goal. So in terms of meeting the goal of testing for COVID, Westchester County uh, will, will achieve that goal as set by the governor. Uh, there's also a goal for a drop in uh, the hospital rate, as well as a uh, drop in the number of, of those who have uh, uh, suffered death. And in both of those two cases, our numbers currently show, over a rolling three-day average, that there's been a steady decline in hospitalizations and a steady decline uh, in the rate of death. The number of deaths, obviously, are a cumulative number, but the rate of how many of them have been dropping down we were in teens for a couple of nights, had a one-day spike. Uh, and then most recently, as I said, uh, only four deaths overnight last night. So on the other hand, one of the standards is to make sure that every hospital in Westchester County has a 30, as a part of 90 day supply in their storeroom of personal protective equipment, sufficient gloves, masks, gowns, and so forth to satisfy that hospital's needs for three solid months should something happen. We are far away from that goal. PPEs that are obtained from the various hospitals and also from the nursing homes and other institutions are very hard to come by at this stage of the game. Um, we're, we're operating on, on a couple of day margin, three day, five day margin of sufficient, and then replenish the stock before we run out. It's been very difficult uh, for us to help with them. Supply those things to get to a 90 day supply is a very steep mountain to climb. We intend to climb it, uh, but it gives you an idea as a resident, when will things open? Well, when we meet all of these tests, a couple of which we have and a couple of which will be difficult for us to do. In one of our briefings next week, when we don't have other lead stories to tell, I'll go through all of those different metrics with you in some detail. And you're welcome to have uh, members of the press welcome to have a side conversation with us and we'll be happy to go over it. All of these track the public announcements that the governor has made already about the four-phase plan to reopen society. Uh, his four-phase four plan begins with reopening construction and manufacturing uh, businesses first. Then the next level will be retail and offices, various administrative offices, back house type of things. The third level of reopening will be bars and restaurants. And the fourth level will be large events, entertainment, things like uh, Major League Baseball and, and other uh, major activities. Education is also included as part of that. So K-12 education and higher education as well. Those four phases established by the governor will have some internal metric. Uh, but as we start to achieve the goals that we have to do, we're going to work very, very hard make sure that we contain the spread as best as we can. And then the governor through his executive authority will, will use it to open up different parts of, uh, of the society. In the areas that are a bit different, uh, we talk uh, consistently about our parks and the decisions that we're making uh, regarding park services and park programs. So I want to announce that uh, by mutual agreement, both by the sponsors of the individual heritage days and by the county's decision, we have uh, canceled for the moment a number of ethnic festivals that were scheduled to have begun already and would be going on at both Kensico Dam Plaza and some of them at Ridge Road Park. Um, if we are able to reestablish the ethnic festival program, perhaps beginning uh, in late July, maybe August 1st, 
Uh, they normally end in August. We will try to then reschedule some of these for September or October based on the sponsorship organizations and based on the county's capacity to do it. But for right now, for the months of May and June, the following heritage festivals have been canceled. The Polish Heritage Festival scheduled for May 17th, the Asian Heritage Festival scheduled for June 6th, the Albanian Heritage Festival for June 7th, the Portuguese Heritage Festival for June 7th, the Irish Heritage Festival on June 27th, and the African American Heritage Festival scheduled for June 28th. Uh, the Hispanic Heritage Festival has also been canceled or potentially postponed for Sunday, July 12th. There are heritage festivals that are now on hold, and they begin mid-July and thereafter. That would be still uh, on the books as a tentative Italian festival on July 19th, India festival August 2nd, Ecuadorian festival August 9th, uh, Jewish festival August 16th, and Muslim festival August 23rd. And some of the earlier canceled festivals may be then put in in uh, September dates, and perhaps into October, weather permitting, if uh, the society begins to open up important understanding of the cancellation of these festivals. We've had them here as a long-term tradition over the last three years. I personally enjoy going there. There's good food, there's dance, there's music. It's a great way to celebrate not just your own personal heritage, but the heritage of all of the Westchester residents and this great mosaic that we have in this, this country and this society. But these events at county parks are, are not able to be held within the rules of social distancing. Uh, it is not possible to get 2,000, 3,000 or more people onto the Kensico Dam Plaza specifically to watch dance or to participate uh, in uh, the various vendors and purchasing items and so forth and ensure a six foot distance between people. So we, we are forced to discuss with the, uh, with the sponsors of these groups and come to mutual agreement that these festivals cancel or postpone. It's important to highlight that because we have authorize that some parks events will continue to be held. And, and I want it to be very clear, I've tried to make this clear every time I speak, I, I feel sometimes I'm repeating myself unnecessarily, but I want people to understand we are making individual decisions, event by event by event. This is not part of some philosophy that says open Westchester now, and it's not part of a philosophy that says close everything forever until the last vestige of the, of the contamination is gone. And within the context of making those decisions, we have reopened our county public golf courses. Keep in mind, these are not the golf courses for the most elite of our county. Those who have resources uh, and like to play golf are generally already members of some of the fine golf clubs and some of the great golf courses that were blessed to have in Westchester County. Those are private courses at Wingfoot, Westchester Country Club, Sleepy Hollow, Quaker Ridge, Old Oaks, a host of those kinds of private courses exist. The public courses exist for individuals who don't have the wealth necessary to be part of the uh, elite private club structure. So the sense that you know somehow rich people are being favored in this golf is a recreation, like there are other recreations: hiking, biking, uh, playing basketball is a recreation, soccer is a recreation, uh, football, softball. All of those are recreations, and uh, we have uh, fields available for all of those types of things. We have soccer courts within the county's inventory. We have a club that has a tennis capacity off of the Bronx River Park where we have a host of these different entities. But whether we open it or close it, just like the ethnic festivals, depend on how many people do you expect to come and how do you expect them to conduct themselves when they're there. So we've had a debate in the public press about our golf courses. We opened two weekends ago, Mohansic and Hudson Hills, the northern part of the county without any incident, or exactly no complaints about those two courses opening from the community for the elected officials of the community. Last weekend we opened courses at Spring Lake and Dunwoody in the city of Yonkers. And again, same situation, no complaints, no citizen complaints. People who philosophically don't want to see us open any park are unhappy. And people who for some reason view golf as a certain type of elite activity and are somehow favorite elite activity, they've registered a negative. But no one has come to us to say, I was at the golf course and I saw these golfers and they weren't practicing social distancing, and they were performing uh, their behavior in the correct way. So uh, we will then on that basis open the, the last two of our courses, those are the Sound Shore courses, Saxon Woods and Maple Moor Golf Courses will open this Saturday. I believe they're targeted to start in the afternoon. I'm not sure what the weather proposes for it, but uh, if you are a golfer and you want to play one of those two courses, then you would call ahead to make a tea time reservation and you'd get the information. The restaurants are closed at all six of these golf courses. There is no takeout food. There is no regular food involved. There's no 19th hole uh, functioning. 
you can use a golf cart, but it is one person per golf cart. You do not want two people sitting in close proximity golfing. You certainly can get a handheld cart and, and walk the route for the best possible exercise if that's your choice as well. And uh, we've structured your physical flow uh, to come in, to register, to go out and to play in a way that will keep social distancing. I saw it for myself at Mohansic. I saw it for myself at Hudson Hills and at the other courses. I know exactly what's going to happen at Saxon Woods and Maple. As an individual, you might walk by and see what looks like and might be a lack of social distancing at any point in time. Um, and certainly, you should register that. You should give a call uh, to the county, county police if you choose, and report what you see. But I also want to caution you because the, these two courses that are going to be open are much more visible than the other four courses. And people will come by, and if you, if you look, be sure that what you're reporting is what actually is. Point of distance, which what looks like people standing right next to each other may actually still be apart from each other, and that that depth perception issue is a factor. So we we will want we want to respond to legitimate requests, <clears throat> but if you hold a basic philosophical position that you don't think we should be playing golf, please don't ask our uh, police to come and, and, and enforce that. We've opened these courses because we think they are appropriate recreation. This will be the second Sunday for Bicycle Sunday. We've had a discussion and debate about it. I was out there for Bicycle Sunday. I saw to the greatest extent people complying with the rules that exist. Uh, we did see there was a vendor off our property who was uh, uh, providing food and they did not have social distancing. That was one of the criticisms on Bicycle Sunday. That was a well-placed criticism. We've reached out to that vendor who we don't control. It's not on county property. We've advised them that he has to follow metrics for his outdoor dining uh, takeout uh, capacity, and we hope that uh, that uh, they will pursue that. I also think that you have to be realistic, as I am. We have we are making a change in our society by asking everybody to wear masks. This is a new request or new demand uh, that is a common sense demand. I have to remember to keep one of these in my pocket all the time, as I said at the earlier press conference. Uh, since we're not accustomed societally to wear masks all the time, there's any number of people that either don't do it, forget to do it, or in some cases won't do it but we're looking for substantial compliance. And you cannot say close down an event because 15 or 20% of the people are not wearing masks. The challenge is to get the 15 and 20% to comply. Otherwise you're making the larger cohort, 80 to 85% of the people that enjoy the recreation and are following the rules, you're making them suffer for those that don't. And the same applies not just to these two areas, which have been sources of controversy, but in a number of hotspots around the county. We have identified for a long period of time the ongoing visitors to Kensico Dam Plaza, the people who come to the Playland Boardwalk, the people who go to Ward Pound Ridge. We understand the Croton Gorge Park uh, has had a lot of people in attendance at these locations. Uh, when I've gone around each of the last few weekends to look at the different parks, I've been to uh, you know, host of been to Tibbetts and Yonkers, Wilson Woods in Mount Vernon, Nature Study Woods in New Rochelle, visited the Saxon Wood hiking trails that access through Harrison, as well as the uh, pool area in White Plains, and I've been up county to a number of the, the, uh, the parks there. Uh, I, I have to remember, do not confuse the number of cars parked, however they may be parked, with the number of people in the park and how they are socially distanced in the park. Wood Pound Ridge has a very tight area for parking, but once you're in that park, the park is vast, and, and there, is, there is no guarantee that people are clustered too close together or not performing. Um, according to the rules that we've established. We're gonna to try to enforce those rules again. I can't expect that it will be perfectly done. I don't doubt that somebody will go out and take a picture this weekend of something they see that uh, doesn't meet the standard I've just set. We're gonna try very hard to implement this. But our philosophy is we look at the intrinsic type of event that it is, the type of recreation that it is, and we close it if it's intrinsically not able to have social distancing and we make sure that it's permitted it can accommodate social distancing. That's why I talked about the cancellation of these heritage festivals. They're, they're fabulous events. I enjoy going to them. You do too if you go. But we can't effectively social distance there. We can effectively social distance on the trailways and on the bike paths and uh, on these other areas. And that's what we're going to try very hard to do. That is our job as a local government. And I might add, the municipal governments have the same task on the everyday streets of their communities. I was once a councilman in my own community. Um, I had local county, uh, local city parks, I live in the city, local city parks that were under the control of the city that I live in, and I was a councilman in, and uh, for those who are town leaders or village leaders, they have their responsibility 
is to do that. We spent some time this week giving out masks in some key places, in the town of Greenberg, in Port Chester, uh, in a number of other places. We're going to continue to do that as we go forward, but it is incumbent upon local officials in each community to stop the spread in their community. And it's important, I think, for each of us to do the best job we can within what our responsibilities are. I would also like to highlight that we're trying to reshape some of our recreational programs around the new realities. We've had in the past some outdoor movies that have been very well attended at the Kensico Dam Plaza. We know that we can't hold an outdoor movie as we did in the past. It won't work the same way. We won't get the social distancing. So now we've come up with a proposal, we'll talk about it more that we're going to implement, that we'll have two drive-in theater nights. And, and that will be a throwback to a different era. That era actually predates me as well. It's more of a 1950s thing for those with a certain age and older. Um, but it will allow you to stay in your car, socially distanced from everybody in another car. You'll be able to turn to a certain radio station and get the signal for the movie that's being shown. And the big screen will show you the movie. And it will be a different kind of outing, a different kind of fun. Uh, but we'll be able to at least have some group movies uh, in the outdoors in ways that we could not before would not be able to do it now under social distancing. So that's coming, we'll give you more details about that. I believe a date in July that we have scheduled, I think another date in August, but details to come. With that, uh, I'm going to wrap up this report other than to say that uh, in our everyday working, we are trying our very best to do a good job to manage the concerns of this county. Um, it is a cliche now to say that we're in uncharted waters, but we are. <clears throat> there is no roadmap. I can't go back to the files and see what happened in 1978 or what happened in 1928 because those circumstances don't exist. We are trying our best and we're trying to do it understanding that this is a terrible health crisis. We talk about the deaths every day. We set up a place to recognize those who passed away. We, we, we try to target testing so we can try to deal with the, the issues of death and the impacts on, uh, on our society. And at the same time, an understanding there's an economic crisis here that goes along with the healthcare crisis. And we have a game plan that the governor's laid out and we're trying to execute that game plan as best as we can. We're not given a special uh, uh, allocation of wisdom from some external situation. Uh, I've worked very hard as a public official over a long career doing different types of things. This is a different test and a different challenge than anything we faced. We face a difficult financial challenge that goes along with this as a county government, but at the same time, I'm very mindful of the individuals that I talk to on a regular basis. Who's lost their job? Who doesn't know if they're ever going to get their job back? A small business owner crying because they don't know that they can reopen the doors to their business, even if the economy opens up at some point in time. And everybody asks me the same question. What are we going to open up? What's going to happen? Am I going to get money from the federal government from the PPP program? Uh, how am I going to handle this problem? How am I going to handle that problem? And, um, you know, we have answers for the questions we can answer. And we put effort into the ones where we're not sure that we have an answer. We try our best. What's going to happen to summer camps? Decision yet to be made by the state government. Uh, how are we handling uh, elective surgeries uh, in available bed spaces? Decision to be made by the state government uh, based on their authority to act regionally. We're trying our very best, and we're trying not because we're government officials, but because we're neighbors, we're friends. I've lived in this county almost all of my life. I grew up in one part of this county, I lived in another part of this county, I've worked in different other communities. I've traveled this county from end to end during this particular assignment, during the campaign to, to, to achieve this position. And uh, when people say, well, you don't know, you don't know what the average people think, I would, I would push back on that. I think I have a chance to talk to people in every corner of this county. And, uh, you know, people might say, well, you know, I'm the people, this is my opinion. Well, you have an opinion, you have a right to express your opinion. But I hear opinions from people who live in Bronxville, and people who live in Portchester, people who live in Peekskill and people who live in Pound Ridge, my old neighborhood in the south side of Mount Vernon, and my current neighborhood in the Ryan Park section adjacent to Playland in the city of Ryan. And, and we're all concerned. I wouldn't say scared, because I think as Americans, we're tough people. As Westchesters, New Yorkers, we're tough people. But it isn't about uh, our ideology now. And, and unfortunately, there always seems to be a red blue answer to every question. A friend of mine said, don't think red blue, think red, white, and blue. And I would agree. I think we have to work to the best of our ability, not just across the political aisle, but, but across ideology. And ideology and what we see on television pushes us in a direction to say, here's the answer. It's simple. It's just all of this. It is not a simple answer as to how we go forward. This is complicated. It involves lots of different impacts on lots of different people. The only way we're going to get through 
is by working together, by negotiating out the things that we disagree on, by learning how to change behavior, even if it's not easy to change behavior, remember to wear the mask, whether you like the way it fits around your face or not, and to show some compassion to the people who we've had who we've lost. And all of those elements and together is how we're gonna get through this. I don't know how long it's gonna take, but I would argue that during the era of the Great Depression, during the era of the great wars that we fought as a nation, civil war as well, things in the history books as far as we're concerned today, nobody knew in the first two months of the Civil War how long this would take and how many people would die before there would be a new birth of freedom, as, as Abraham Lincoln said. Nobody knew uh, how long it would take when uh, Pearl Harbor was bombed and uh, young men of that day shipped off to Europe to fight, uh, to fight against the Nazi domination of Europe. Nobody knows. Nobody can give you a guarantee. I can't. No one can. But what we do know is this is what's been handed to us. This is what we have to deal with. Whether you're a public official, a private person, we have to deal with this. And that's what we're trying to do. We have to have a certain amount of respect for each other, understanding that no one person has all the answers and everybody's got an opinion. And if we're easily done, we do it like that. Easy, we can all believe. This is tough. This is tough, but we're resolute and we're gonna go forward. We're going to make as intelligent decisions as we can and we will work through this. Not the government, not me, we, you, me, everybody else listening. So go to questions, uh, what questions we may have. Do we have any questions? No, no questions yet. Okay, so any members of the press who want to reach out to us, feel free to call Catherine Chaffee, we'll be happy to respond. Uh, our next update like this uh, will be two o'clock on Monday afternoon. We'll certainly have updates on statistics and we're gonna track very closely uh, this incident of the uh, child uh, related uh, illness. Uh, we have a, a Facebook Live interview at 11 o'clock on Monday morning. If anything happens of an emergent nature for Westchester County, we'll certainly uh, have a special report on that and we'll certainly reach out to members of the press, members of the public. I'm going to spend most of my weekend visiting some of these parks of ours to make sure to the best of our ability that they are properly managed within the, the confines of mask wearing and, uh, and social distancing and uh, we'll hope for the best. We'll work for the best. Thank you very much, George Latimer. Have a good day. Stay safe.